Hello. Today, something a little bit different for the archives. Um, I'm going to give a guided meditation through the Owen Grove. This has grown as a concept or idea from the Zoom meetings that we've been having all year. Um, at the end of which we have a short meditation uh, and then share what insights people perceive or get. And it was probably a obvious thing to do, but I haven't thought about it until recently. Um, but to narrate um, to talk through a visualization of being in the Owen Grove. Now, some people may be new to meditating or visualizing, uh, path working, imaginal journey. Some people might be old hands at it. Um, so I'll just go over a few basics. First of all, when I've given workshops on drumming. I've got my drum here too. I'm going to use my lyre and my drum for the meditation. But when I've given workshops on drumming to have shamanic visions and stuff, sometimes people say, well, how do I know it's not just my imagination? And it is. It is your imagination. You know, your imagination is really very, 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 very important hugely important it's your inner world you know and you use your imagination to initiate to set up a journey you know um so i mean that's a big conversation in itself but the thing is you use your imagination to begin but then you let the journey unfold you know and something deep inside you will become the film director of the story that unfolds you know and and really the imagination is the bridge to your soul you know and it's how your soul talks to you through pictures through dreams you know we all dream four times every night whether we, whether we remember them or not but it's it's in the dreamings that our soul talks to us and heals our minds and stuff you know it's massively important that's one side of it the other side of it is you know to create a threshold inside you where you can go for meditation for sanctuary for peaceful thoughts and so on so some of you that have been working with the own grove for a while may have i hope started uh, creating your own internal Owen Grove, uh, uh, an astral or psychic, psychical, imaginal, astral, whatever you want to call it, an inner world Owen Grove, that when you close your eyes, you can walk around it, you can walk from your hawthorn tree to your oak tree, you know, because they're next to each other. Now, maybe that's a lesson in itself how to how to set it up how to do that but for now because i'm aiming this at complete beginners as well it doesn't matter at all whether you have begun to create your own internal grove you know you can just do this as a one-off visualization so if it's if you haven't got an internal grove if you're new to this sort of idea then it's just a clearing in the forest and you just begin from that clearing in the forest you know and i'll talk us through it now um as we go around the grove in this visualization we'll be going through all 20 trees i haven't got a script i'm just going to ad lib uh, talk off the top of my head but primarily i'm going to mention a god or a goddess that I think 
corresponds with each tree of the oem. Now this is totally subjective and it's perfectly okay for you to disagree and say oh I don't think that god or goddess belongs to that tree it doesn't matter you know it's just a methodology and really on your own path or journey you build up your own relationships with each tree and if you have different gods and goddesses to the ones that I invoke in this visualization that's perfectly fine you know um, create your own oem grove make it your grove and each tree is really a god or goddess of your own grove so the potential there is 20 gods and goddesses that kind of hold your sacred circle and support you and, and hold you so it doesn't matter if you disagree with the god and goddess names I come up with. Um, they're what's in my mind at this current moment in time. And as the years unfold, I may change my mind. Probably will, you know, because the other thing is it's a living grove. So my understanding of the rowan tree or the hawthorn tree might be different. 10 years from now in which case 10 years from now I'll invoke a different god or goddess maybe you know it doesn't matter it's about it's a sacred sanctuary spiritual circle medicine wheel sacred circle inside of you within which you have an altar like 20 altars 20 trees to 20 different gods and goddesses you know that and so it's really important to make it your own you know so use this video clip as a methodology you know and so you can go along with what i say maybe do that to begin with and then in your own time adapt it to you make it yours you know do it your way um don't do someone else's magic, you know, doing someone else's magic is secondhand magic. Do it your way. But um, we can use the OEM as a backdrop, as a blueprint of creating a grove, you know. So it's really about you and your relationship with the trees and the spirits of the land and so on. So this visualization is not a dogma it's just a method it's a methodology and use it you know uh, i hope some people use it again and again because it, the more you do it the more you build it up and when you're ready or immediately adapt it change it make it your own you know so it's just a very simple thing all i'm going to do is imagine us standing in the center of the clearing in the center of the grove and we're going to look at each of the 20 trees one after the other and then we'll have a little bit of quiet time to daydream to meditate to try and get something from it you know so before i begin there's the circle of the sacred grove itself the circumference is 20 trees that relate, relate to different times of the year. And each tree can be seen as an altar, a sanctuary, a shrine to a different god or goddess corresponding with that tree. Um, but there's also you in the center. And the importance of the center point is really important too. So around the circle corresponds with the stars as they change throughout the year. So there's seasonal stars, there's winter stars and summer stars that give each tree some star law. But in the centre, there are stars that are ever present all year round. They don't come and go. They, you know, they're always there. And there is a video in the Owen Grove YouTube channel 
I forget what it's called, but it's about the central circumpolar stars. The stars at the centre of the grove might be what it's called. can't remember. Um, so I'll talk us around the 20 trees. And then you can either stand in the centre and connect with the central stars, which is the great mother of the Celtic mythologies by many names, um, Dana, Doan, Brigantia, you know, Bridie, she's there at the centre point. Um, or you can go from the centre to any tree that you feel drawn to regardless of the time of the year. If you feel drawn to the holly tree, go to the holly tree. If you feel drawn to the pine tree, go to the pine tree. So a couple of things then, preparatory. We use some breathing to relax the mind because we want to take our mind into a more relaxed state to try and encourage dreaming whilst we're awake. So when I say daydreaming, I'm not being um, flippant. Uh, I am literally trying to get some imagery, get some dream imagery whilst you're still awake. So it's dreaming whilst you're awake. That's what you're trying to do with any meditation. And to help that process, we use the imagination and then sit back and let the story unfold. Now, so to help with that, some slow breathing to relax the brain, to relax the mind, to relax the forehead. Now, <clears throat> I'm just sitting on a chair and I recommend that you do too. You can lie down and listen to this meditation, but there's a chance of falling asleep. You know, um, sitting upright is good for the spinal cord, um, for the energy that goes up and down the spine and also keeps falling asleep away so just to begin with i'll talk us through basic breathing when we do the meditation just try and do this breathing exercise so first of all it's just slow breathing and when you breathe in energy comes up your spinal cord and stimulates your pineal gland and you do it very slowly so this is me breathing in i'm just going to exhale so now I'm going to do a slow breath in. And a pause. And then I'm going to do a slow breath out. Now, everyone's lung capacity is different. So this is just me demonstrating. Breathing in. Breathing out. Now what I'm doing is every time I breathe in, this is from the world of Tai Chi and Qigong, every time I breathe in, I'm imagining energy coming up my spine to my pineal gland with the in-breath. And then I pause and then as I exhale I just let it settle back down, down through my body, back down to the end of the lower cauldron to the bottom of the spine between my legs and then from between my legs back up my spine and then back down to my lower cauldron between my legs and that's all it is it's just slowing the breath down now a deep breath in, filling up the lungs. Now we use the exhale to relax the brain, relax the mind. Oh, just letting it all go. 
so you use the exhale to relax. Breathing in brings you new energy, inspired, inspirited, inspirate. Stimulates the pineal gland and then the exhale, take all your stress and worry and anxiety away. Just relax, relax your neck, relax your shoulders, relax your chest, settle down, do two more breaths. So new energy with the in-breath. Relaxing your mind and your emotions as you exhale. Trying to slow the brain down so that you're ready for daydreaming. And then one more deep breath in. And a relaxation. Now that's just a demonstration. The main thing is not to do this. <laughs> not breathing here. You know, hyperventilating. The slower you can breathe, the better for your relaxation. Okay? Fill up your body with oxygen properly. Not <laughs> here. So this is um, not good for health, not good for the mind. So f breathing down into the tummy, the diaphragm and all the rest of it. So this is what will happen then. I'll, I'll talk us through some breathing and then I'll take us into the visualization. And when we have a moment, maybe four or five minutes, might not even be that long but three or four minutes of, of free daydreaming where you go and do whatever you do in your journey you know go to your tree or connect with the stars above whatever or play the lyre and in my experience the lyre activates the pineal gland but I won't play a particular tune it would be like random raindrops I'll just be doing that and that's just to let you know that I'm there I'm present I'm holding the space but you just daydream during those raindrops if you like and then when the journey's over I'll drum and there's a specific type of drumming that I'll do and in my mind I'm drumming to your lower world your middle world and your upper world so that goes like this it's a callback it's from the shamanic tradition so it's just calling you back from the daydreaming so i'll be thinking lower world and i'll go just four beats and then i'll be thinking of the middle world and then the upper world because i don't know where your daydreaming's taking you so that's a call back in each of the three realms and then there'd be some rapid drumming. And that's the final callback, when you bring yourself back to the beginning of the journey, the clearing in the forest inside the grove. And that will be it. So it's just a forewarning that there will be some lyre playing when you're meditating and daydreaming, and there will be the drum to call you back. Okay, so we begin. So I'll do some breathing again to take us back into the zone, if you like. Okay, and I'll close my own eyes when I'm narrating because I'll be visualizing it as I narrate. Okay, but for now, again, <clears throat> spine upright, shoulders relaxed, get yourself comfortable. And we do some breaths first. We do three breaths and then I'll start the visualization. So deep breath in. A 
and then in your own time breathe to your own rhythm but relax as you exhale whenever you breathe in you draw new energy up your spine and whenever you breathe out use the exhale to relax calm down relax your forehead your eyes your neck your shoulders breathing in gives you new energy new vitality stimulates your pineal gland and then as you exhale just relax because you want to take yourself as close to dreaming as you can whilst being awake okay another deep breath in and relaxing as you exhale now I'm going to begin the journey and it helps to have your eyes closed closing the eyes helps to visualize so just keep breathing slowly to your own rhythm remember to relax as you exhale Now, in your mind's eye, I want you to visualize being in a clearing in a forest. Now, this may be your own Oam Grove, if you've already started to grow one. But if you haven't, it's just a clearing in a forest. But know that this is sacred ground. It's a sanctuary. It's perfectly safe. It's holy, holy, holy ground. And the clearing is surrounded by trees. It's a safe place. Now, as best as you can, standing in the clearing of the forest imagine looking towards the north in the north of the clearing there is a mighty yew tree huge it's thousands of years old this yew tree tiny red berries amongst its foliage it's been growing and breathing and expanding for thousands of years now our journey will begin looking at the yew tree and it will conclude with the yew tree Like a clock, the yew tree is midnight. And we begin at midnight and we finish at midnight. So seeing the yew tree as 12 o'clock or midnight, I want you to look to the right of the yew tree. The first tree at one o'clock, the first tree of the clearing of the circumference around this sacred grove to the right of the yew tree is the birch birch is the first tree of the oam corresponds with the beginning of the year an array of sunshine after the rebirth of the sun at winter solstice To my mind and to others, the birch tree corresponds best with the goddess 
Ellen of the Ways. Traditionally, she has antlers. Very unusual, but the stag and the deer are the symbol of the winter time. And Ellen is the first ray of light after the winter solstice. Her story goes way, way back to the reindeer goddess of the Northern Hemisphere. Going back thousands and thousands of years. She's the light of the land. Her symbol, of course, is a deer reindeer. To the right of the birch tree is the beautiful rowan tree, sacred to the Celtic goddess Bridey, Brigid, Brigantia. And the rowan tree takes us to Imbolc, the midpoint between winter solstice and spring equinox, the Celtic fire festival of Imbolc, sacred to the goddess Brigid. Her symbol, her animal, rather, is the swan. To the right of the rowan tree, on the other side of Imbolc, is the older tree. The older tree, sacred to the story of the god Bran and his sister Branwen. It's a sad story. It's about the cauldron of the other world and it's to do with star law. Complicated, but it doesn't matter right now. It's the second herald of Imbolc and the animal of Bran and Branwen is the raven. Branwen means white raven and Bran is just raven. So the brother and sister you can see is a kind of yin and yang, white and black ravens, the older tree. To the right of the older tree is the willow tree. And the willows are sacred to the nine sisters, the nine maidens. And in the Taliesin law of the cauldron of Anuin, it is the breath or spirit of the nine maidens that keep the cauldron of the other world warm. They are the muses, the nine muses, the goddesses of inspiration. The willow tree. To my mind, the sacred animal of the willow tree is the heron. Equally, it could be the salmon of wisdom. As this corresponds with the zodiac sign of Pisces, the fish. Now, turning to face due east, the fifth tree of the Oum is the ash tree. Standing due east at the position of spring equinox. The direction of the sunrise. From this moment on we're in the lighter half of the year. The triumphant sun rising in the east, overcoming the darkness, corresponds best in Celtic mythology with the god Lu, Lugus, Spear of Lu. Spears were made of the ash tree and the ash is one of the sacred trees of Ireland. There were five guardian trees, three of them were ash trees. To the right of the ash tree 
is the beautiful hawthorn tree covered in hawthorn blossoms at the beginning of spring it's the May Queen in most folklore when hawthorn blossoms the May Queen has arrived You can imagine her however you like. There are many different goddesses of nature, goddesses of flower, flowers in Celtic mythology and others. She's the beauty of nature herself. To the right of Hawthorne stands the mighty oak, king of the woods strength and endurance, the most powerful wood. And the Oak King takes us to Beltane, on the other side of Beltane to the right of the Oak Tree is the Holly Tree. Holly is the Lord of the Woods. Holly is the first evergreen tree in the Oam. And every Beltane throughout Britain in many places, the Oak King and the Holly King battle to win the hand of the May Queen Hawthorne. This is one of the perfect patterns of the Oam Grove, that Hawthorne, Oak and Holly are all together and Oak and Holly stand either side of Beltane to win the Flower Maiden, to win the Queen of May. To the right of the Holly Tree is the Hazel Tree. Hazel is the tree of wisdom, tree of intuition, and it's the tree of mercurial wizards. Like Taliesin, like Merlin, like Ogma himself, like Finn McCool, Hermes, Odin, Thoth, all of the mercurial wizards. In Welsh law, this would be Gwydion. Gwydion means born of the trees and he's the tree wizard in the Mabinogion. tricksters, tricksters and wizards. Facing now due south is the tenth tree of the Oam and it's the apple and the apple is sacred to the summer queen apple holds the position of summer solstice. This is Avalon. Avalon means the place of apples and it's the summer lands. The summer lands, Avalon, the sacred apples, summer solstice. The Briatheroam fir, quirt, apple, is shelter of a hind. Hind is a female deer. So looking south at the apple tree, there's a female deer. And behind us, behind you, is the yew tree and the white stag, the white heart. Creatures of the woods symbols of the Lord and Lady of the Woods. To the right of the apple tree is the vine, the grapes, the grapes that can turn into raisins and currants, sweeteners of bread. But the grapes also make the wine of the mystery traditions. And these ideas were there in the early medieval days when the Oam tree list was created. 
And there is a god in Celtic mythology called Sylvanus. He's the lord and protector of the forests and he's often depicted holding grapes and apples. And here in the Oam Grove, apples and grapes are next to each other. So there is a feeling of the green man, Sylvanus, Uwefnir, protector of the woods, here just after summer solstice. Kind of a counterbalance to Ellen of the Ways, just after winter solstice. To the right of the vine is ivy. Ivy takes us up to the Celtic fire festival of Lunasa. In mystery traditions, the vine and the ivy decorated the heads of gods like Dionysus, Bacchus, the wine leaf and the ivy, the vine and ivy were mixed together to make a very intoxicating wine that gave people visions in the mystery traditions. And here they are side by side just before Lunasa. The Lunasa is a time not just of bringing in the harvest but also the sacred marriage. A child conceived at Lunasa is born nine months later at Beltane. This is the childbirth of Taliesin as one example. Now the bride of Lunasa is the summer goddess, the summer queen. On the other side of Lunasa to Ivy is Broom. And so many Celtic goddesses are celebrated in their beauty by having hair as golden as the broom. Broom is the maiden aspect of the triple goddess of the Owen Grove. And she is the summer bride to Ivy, to like Bacchus and Dionysus. Maybe Lou, because it's Lunasa. Lou wearing ivy and vine leaves in his hair to marry Broom, the Summer Queen. And hidden in her mysteries are finer star lore about the heavenly cauldron crater, the wine mixing cup and the grail. She is the Grail Maiden and it's all to do with the middle cauldron and following your heart and that's for another day. To the right of Broom, the mother aspect of the triple goddess of the Owen Grove, it's Blackthorn corresponding with the sign of Virgo, the serial goddess. Goddess of the mystery traditions, Ceres, Demeter, and in Welsh bardic lore, Ceridwen, the mother, the great provider, Rosmerta, providing all of the harvest, fruits and vegetables and cereals, abundance to help people through the winter months. Now facing due west, the grandmother crone aspect of the triple goddess of the Owen Grove is the elder, elderberries. 
in European law, Mother Elder, or Old Mother Elder, Queen of the Fairies. It's the wise old lady that takes us through autumn equinox to descend into the mysteries, to descend into the dark half of the year. She's the cutter of the cord, the washer at the ford, and she will cut away all that no longer serves our purpose. From autumn equinox, we go into the dark half of the year and the first tree to the right of Elder is the pine tree beginning the season of the wild hunt and in Irish mythology the great hero hunter Finn McCool and his warriors the Fenna they would camp in the pine forests and prepare to hunt in those camps. So the pine tree is a preparatory time for all that's to come as we descend into winter. To the right of the pine tree is gorse, golden gorse, as golden as the broom but unlike the broom which is soft to touch, the gorse is prickly, spiky, and it's protective. It's the beginning of the wild heath, and the winter hunt is going to go across the heathland, through gorse and heather to the aspen trees. Gorse gives shelter from the storm, for many little creatures, rabbits, snakes, mice. In the cold, harsh weather, gorse is source for food. Gorse takes us to Samhain, the Celtic New Year, time of planting seeds that will grow in the spring. To the right of the gorse, it's an expanse of heather, purple flowers, tiny, 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 no higher than your shin bones. But heather gave comfort to early humans. Bedding was made from heather. Mattresses were stuffed with heather. Beer, there's a Celtic ale was made from heather. Heather gives you the comforts of home to get you through the winter. And the star law of heather is strange. It's all to do with Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer, but it's all about healing the deepest wounds. Ophiuchus was such a great healer that he could bring the dead to life. At the end of the wild heath of gorse and heather there are aspen trees. The aspen trees are the sacred spirit trees of the dead, of all of your ancestors. Their voices, their whispers can be heard in the aspen trees, giving us the wisdom of all their lives. Through every aspen twig there runs a five-pointed star. The starry realms is the spirit realm. So after the wild hunt, souls going to the spirit world. Heather and aspen comfort us. with the wisdom of the ancestors and the comfort of home, the fires of the tribe, sitting round the cauldron, sitting round the fire, 
taking us due north to the ancient, ancient yew tree. And the yew tree holds the winter solstice, the longest night, and the three days standstill, and then the rebirth of the sun, and the year begins and then anew. So we have honoured all 20 trees, some of them are shrubs. That is our sacred circle, the circumference. Now standing in the centre of the grove, at night time, above your head are the central stars that are ever present. The pole star belongs to the little bear. In ancient days when stone circles were made, it belonged to Draco the dragon. Lots of our old star lore remember the dragon at the centre. But we are now the 21st century. And the pole star has shifted from the dragon to the little bear. And there is the great bear, Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, the Plough, like the hand of the clock turning around and around. And by the Great Bear, on the Milky Way itself, there is a W-shaped constellation called Cassiopeia. It's the Queen of the Heavens. In Egyptian Astronomy, this is Isis, the Queen of the Heavens. And in Welsh Bardic tradition, this is Chlis Don, the court of Don, the court of the Mother Goddess. It corresponds with Danu, Dana. The Mother Goddess is always present, shining down onto the centre of the grove no matter what time of year. You are surrounded by 20 trees. They protect you like a spiritual firewall. And the Great Mother shines down upon you. You are born, live your life. Breathe slowly. I'll play the lyre raindrops for a few minutes and you can stay in the center meditating or you can walk to any tree that beckons you. Use your imagination.
Give yourself a moment to just gather your thoughts, stretch. A good thing to do now is to just stop. I'll press stop in a minute. Have a notepad and pen, should have said that at the beginning write down any insights you had you know um, there you go hope you enjoyed that and it's what we're doing on the regular zoom sessions but we're focusing on one tree at a time and we've only got Heather Aspen and you to go for this year and then we'll be beginning a new cycle at the beginning of January I think it's on New Year's Eve actually um, I have no choice over that the Sun goes from one tree to another when it chooses you know I just work on that when it happens anyway there you go uh, hope that was useful um, make it your own you know figure out your own gods and goddesses build your inner grove wherever you go your growth goes with you, you know, wherever you are. Stressful situations, maybe at work or family soap operas and dramas and things, you know, wherever you are, even on a train or a bus, you can close your eyes and be in your grove and have some sanctuary and peace. You know, take your little bit of garden with you so that it's always there, that it's inside you. Thank you.